The craziest thing about Gucci Gang is I made it at Record Plant, the same studio back in the 70s where my dad was trying to audition for a band. He stole the singer of that band's wife there, and now she's my stepmom. Another funny part is that I brung a girl to that studio. I didn't even make a beat yet. I just take her to this like lounge thing they have and like got it popping back there real quick. Then I went in the studio and then just started making the beat. And I always tell my dad that and he's be like, okay. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Spread their rats on new chain. My bitch love do cocaine. Ooh, I fuck a bitch, I forgot her name. I can't buy me no way to rain. As a kid, I just always wanted to do music. I started getting into production when I was like 17. I was listening to like Wiz Khalifa, Cabin Fever, and I would always see Prod by Lex Luger, all them people. And I was seeing that they were using Free Loops, so I just downloaded it on my mom's computer. From there, I just got like addicted to it. I stopped everything I was doing because I was staying up all night making beats. I have to be in the right mood to make beats. Sometimes I won't be in the right mood, and then I think every beat sucks. And I can't make beats without having a full outfit on. Like shoes and everything, even if I'm in my house. Because when I make a beat, usually I hate all my beats. That's my problem. So I have to at least have a good outfit on and feel confident, like I'm like, okay, I can do this. The funny thing about Record Plant is that it has a basketball court in there. And like Pump, I already knew he wasn't recording that night. He was just gonna play basketball. So I was gonna make a beat there. I wasn't gonna waste studio time. I like being in studios as big and loud and nice. I pulled up like just some piano and citrus, and that's a stock plug-in, which is funny. And then I added this gross beat. Every Fruit Loops dude, everyone who uses gross beat knows about the half speeding thing. And I half sped it, but I don't want it all the way half sped, so I turned it like halfway off. This is a little secret, like instead of sounding so dry, it sounded like this. Makes it sound like more is going on right there. You can kind of still hear the notes I play, but then it adds like these random notes that hit off each other. The next thing I did after having the piano and I was content with the piano, I went to Dune and I found the sequence. I felt like it was too fast and it was just like, whoa, too much is going on, it was really fast. And so I pulled up Gross B and I just half sped it and then it sounded like this. I was kind of just experimenting. Like, I found that sound, I just laid the note out, and I was like, I'm gonna put a gross beat and see how it sounds. They like added together perfectly. So I was like, okay, that's sweet. Like, I didn't really think, I didn't put no, too much thought into it. So after I had the melodies laid out, I just moved on to hi hats. It's like very simple. Usually I always do that too. I go melodies and then hi-hat and a clap. And then I layered that clap with this snare. After I added some percussion with the melodies playing, I, I felt like, okay, it sounded good. I got something, something like it was going somewhere. And then usually after I do like the percussion and all that, I add the 808. It sounded good. I feel like if I added two more distortion or any EQ, it would have been like overkill. So I kind of like to have a cleaner sound. The thing I like having G-Nails around me when I'm making like making a beat is like, and we collab is that he'll like hype, hype it up better. Like, nah, that's good, that's good. It's like motivation. He's like, nah, you're good. And I was like, yo, add something to the beat. He switched up some of the hi-hats. Then he added this uh, rim. He added like a little bounce because it was like kind of like on the offbeat of it. The kick followed the 808 pattern, pretty much very simple, didn't do too much to that. I found a little open hi-hat, and it's very simple, it's just a little once. That was like pretty much the whole beat, I was already feeling like everything was full, but it needed one more melody. Everything else sounded really like low and dark. Something in my head just popped up like, I'm gonna add this higher piano. I felt like that part stuck in people's brains. So the last thing after the beat was laid out and I added that little high-pitched piano, everything sounded great. We had our tags, like, like every producer, but then I remember this rise I always use. 
That's all it is. It's like, but it sounds like something like epic's about to happen. I always use that one. I, I love that rise. So with that, with the whole beat, sounds like this. That's it right now, Tina. Ooh, big, big head on the beat. I knew the beat was done because Pump was like, yeah, that's it, it's good. I didn't have to really add nothing and he already knew what the hook was. I'd rather make beats in front of the rapper on the spot. Like, it doesn't add no pressure to me, that's perfect. And I don't care if you don't like none of the beats I end up making, like, oh well. Like, I'll come back another time. But I always like doing it on the spot because I feel like when I'm by myself, sometimes I add too much sound. That one sounded perfect. I could loop it forever and I would never get annoyed of it. Every time I went to the studio with Pump, I always wanted to make him his biggest song. Well, that's my goal with like every rapper. I want people to know like, when you get a beat from Big Head, it's gonna be the biggest song. Cause like nothing's ever good enough. Like I'll be like, I set a goal. Like I wanna do this or whatever. And then it happens and then it's like, I want 10 of those. Like I want like, I want to, I want to fill the billboard charts. Gucci gang, 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 Gucci gang. Spread their racks on new chain. Yeah.